Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tashara and today I wanted to talk about my grad school journey. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and let's go ahead and get into it. So I got my MSW from the University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia. Um, my journey toward that was a bit disjointed. So this is what happened. Okay, so initially when I was in my undergrad social work program, I was very much irritated by how there was so much focus on the problems like we always we were just talking about like racism and our feelings about it but no one was ever talking about solutions and so I wanted to go into something that would help me influence systemic change and so I wanted to go into law and I started practicing for the LSAT. And things happened in my personal life that I won't get into that discouraged me from continuing to study from the LSAT because it takes a lot of time and let's be honest, money to be successful and get a good score in the LSAT. So instead of doing that, I just completely stopped thinking about grad school as a whole, okay? Um, and then one day I was talking to one of my colleagues and she was like, girl, what you about to do after you graduate? Because I know you're not about to keep working at that job. And at the time I was doing security um, at Amazon because the Amazon, Amazon headquarters are in Seattle. So they're paying us fifteen fifty an hour. And in 2014, 2015, that's a lot of money, okay? Anyway, she was like, I know you're not about to keep working at the job. And so that kind of, that really inspired me to start looking more into grad school again. And so I started thinking, okay, what do I want? What I want is to leave Seattle and I want to be somewhere where there's better weather because the weather, not only does it impact your mood in Seattle, because it, the majority of the time is very gray uh, when it's not the summertime, but I wanted to be around more black people. I mean, Seattle is a very white city. Let's be real. And I'm from Seattle, born and raised, so I wanted to get out of that and I wasn't able to go away for college because it just wasn't affordable, um, but now I have the opportunity to do it. So I wanted to, I've always wanted to go to Howard and when I was looking through their application process for MSW, it just wasn't it. Like they were talking about our funding for programs are very limited, so please let us know how you're going to pay for this program. And I'm like... I ain't got no money, so I'm not about to apply for this. Never mind. So I looked away from HBCUs, and but I wanted to move down south. And so I applied for Florida State University, and I also applied for UGA. The reason why I picked those two schools is because they had an emphasis on, they had a program that had an emphasis on macro social work, which is what I wanted to go to because, it, go into because again, remember I said I wanted to focus on creating systemic change. So I applied for those two programs and Florida, I was accepted to both. Uh, Florida State accepted me, but they were only going to give me like $1,000 and also out of state tuition. No, no ma'am. But also University of Georgia accepted me and they gave me an assistantship. Like it was just really random. Like one day, like after I was accepted, I got a call and they were like, hey, we're going to give you an assistantship. And I was like, thank you. This is beautiful. <laughs> um, so, and I honestly didn't know how I was going to pay for my program. I guess I was just going to take up, out a whole bunch of loans and go to an out-of-state school, I guess. I don't know. But I decided on University of Georgia because they gave me the assistantship. So I moved down there. Um, my mom and my mom's husband paid for, like, um, to ship all my stuff down there. My mom paid for my car to be shipped down there. And it's very expensive to move. Like I believe we probably spent about $2,000 on just flights, shipping the car, shipping my stuff. It was a lot of money, but I didn't pay for it. So I'm grateful that they did. And I had an apartment with a roommate. So I was living in like student housing, but not through the university. It was like an apartment situation that was geared towards students that they would match it with the roommate, which was cool. Cause I was like, this is a way for me to meet somebody. And thankfully, my roommate was really, really cool. Anyway, so <laughs> moved down there. Um, within a certain amount of time, I started my program. And I did not like it because I am someone who just does not like a traditional way of learning. Like, I don't like school. I've never liked school. I don't like sitting there listening to people lecture. I don't like any of it. And so I didn't really go to class. And I started to really... Um, I had consequences so I was failing in one of my like research classes so I was failing one of my research classes because I wasn't going and I wasn't doing my projects and papers the way he was teaching us to specifically do it 
And so I had to start going to his office hours so I could make up for the learning that I missed from not going to class and do my project so that I could salvage my grade. And I did salvage it ultimately. Um, but I learned that I needed to start going to class and so I did. But I was always late. I was always late. Um, so I'm not the I'm not the best student. I've never been the best student. <laughs> and I be feeling guilty when y'all be asking me questions like this because like I am just now starting to be like as I step into my professional years, I've started to be um, a reliable and professional person. Before this, like the last five, six years before this, trash, completely trash. Anyway, I digress. When I hear this question about can you talk about your grad school experience, and it could just be me just insinuating, but I think people want to know how um, complex the work is or how heavy the workload is. And for me, even though I don't like school, school and studying has always come easy to me. Like I don't feel like I have ever had to put much effort into school. And that could be because of the type of classes I was um, taking. But I've never really felt challenged by school. In my experience, the, the, the program itself was not hard. It was, what was hard was for me waking up and going to class and learning what my professors expected of me so that I could get a good grade in their class. But the, the, the work, the concepts, that wasn't hard for me to learn, you know? And so it really just depends on your learning style. Like if you're someone who really needs lecture, you really need teaching, it's best for you to go to class. Um, it's best for you to engage in after hours, or off, I'm sorry, after hours, um, office hours of professors, because you need that type of teaching. But for me, school and studying just does, is not that hard for me. Um, so I can't really speak to how complicated the program was. And I also can't speak to how complicated a clinical program is because I've never done anything clinical as far as like in academia. Like I said, just know your learning style. Know how you learn and make sure you are getting taught in the way that fits your learning style. If you're not, do not feel bad for going up to the professor and asking them to cater toward their need, to cater towards your needs. So just to recap, because I know sometimes I just be yapping. Um, the program for me was not challenging. The challenging part was me actually going to class. I've always done the work and I always feel like I understood the work, but going and sitting through lecture and paying attention has always been a challenge for me, regardless. To re recap, I went to the University of Georgia. My focus was macro social work. And also when I started my program, I learned that I just needed to take like one extra class in order to get a nonprofit like management certificate, which I decided to do because it's just one extra class for a certification, which I feel like would be uh, what I would be more marketable in the future, but which I'm now not even using anyway. So I did that as well. So macro focus with a nonprofit management certificate. My practicum was in a research organization. So they did survey research um, and at the time they were doing like a juvenile justice research project. At the time my career goals were to get into like a think tank or some type of uh, program analysis or research analysis position after college because I felt like that was a way for me to help influence systemic change and not just focus on micro level or personal level issues which you do when you practice clinically. While I was in my program and while I was in my practicum especially, I found that it was really boring work and I found that I did not want to practice macro level because I wouldn't be fulfilled. Like of course I would be helping influence like systemic change but I wouldn't feel good working mostly alone. It just wasn't helpful for my personality. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to try clinical. I wanted to clarify because I feel like I'm not explaining it well enough in this video. But when I was working in my practicum at the Research Institute, as well as assisting with research in my assistantship, I was working alone a lot. And I just felt like it just was not helpful for my personality type. Even though I'm more of an introverted or ambiverted person, I still wanted the opportunity to socialize within my work environment. 
Um, I also feel like I wanted to serve people on a one-to-one or group basis. So just sitting at a computer, synthesizing research all day, every day just was not for me. I wanted the um, human interaction. And so that's when I decided I wanted to try a different career path. So I would say my grad school journey has been very interesting even though i'm practicing social work now i'm not doing what i went to school for like i went to school to like be a researcher <laughs> and i'm not doing that at all and i have no desire to do that at all i have no desire to sit at a computer and synthesize synthesize data i just have no desire to do that so that's my grad school journey some tips that i do have for aspiring msw students is um, look for free programs or ways to get your program paid for. Social work is traditionally underpaid as a as a whole. It, even though I make videos about how you can make more money and ways in which you can make more money within this, the field of social work and encouraging social workers not to limit themselves, traditionally this field is very underpaid. So if you do go into it with the goal of making six figures right out of school, nine times out of ten you're not going to do that. If you want to do that, you need to start looking into other fields like tech or like medicine, going into other fields where you can make good money right off the bat. Social work is not gonna do that for you. You have to pay your dues in order to make good money. You have to get licensed, and to get licensed, it takes years and lots of supervision hours and studying and passing an exam. Like that's one way to increase your earnings within clinical practice, but then even within my macro practice, you have to put yourself in positions in networks where you are able to find roles where you're able to make good money right off the bat as a social worker. But I digress. If you're interested in social work, just know that traditionally it's an underpaid program, so it is in your best interest to have a program where it is going to be paid for. So like myself, um, when I was looking for programs, I did apply for two that had grant money or assistantship opportunities and i was blessed to be able to get an assistantship opportunity that took a lot of money off my plate when it comes to paying for the program um also apply for scholarships that's also an option it's definitely something that you should take time and prioritize before you go into grad school even when you're in grad school Another good thing to know that is if you have your BSW, it only takes about a year to get your MSW. So I, my program was an advanced standing program. So it only took a year. So I believe it was three semesters it took for me to get my MSW, which also saves a lot of money. Also, definitely think about your why. I think we should also, I think we should think about our why with a lot of things. But think about why you're going into social work. What is leading you into getting into this program and this field? Even though your why may change and your passions or your interests may change, you know, just understanding what is guiding you into this profession will be helpful um, so that you can explore your interests while you're in it. For example, if you want to go into family therapy, at least you know that, right? And that's why you're going into social work so that you can have internships or gear your experiences toward training yourself to become a therapist. And even though for me, my passions have changed and my interests have changed throughout my career, um, just understanding what was leading me into my program was very helpful so that I could explore it. And even though ultimately I found that it wasn't for me, at least I got the opportunity to explore what I was interested in. So those are my tips. Like definitely understand your why and like what's leading you into the program. And also find a program that is either very low cost or you can get some type of grant, um, assistantship, some type of funding from it because traditionally Social work is a very low paying profession. So those are my tips. That is my grad school journey. As always, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. And also DM me on Instagram. My Instagram is theprototype underscore. I will leave the link to my Instagram below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see y'all next time. Bye.